Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and this is the semi-drunk betting breakdown for the MMA card for March 18th. Now, just because I'm calling it the semi-drunk MMA contrarian betting breakdown doesn't mean that these are, you know, wagers that were selected while I was drunk. Um, I just happened to be in Atlantic City just kind of uh, with my friends for a uh, birthday for a friend of mine. We're watching some of the games and um, I did have my selections for the MMA card fired up, but I just never did the video. So I figured I would come up and do that for you guys. And even though I'm not exactly in the best shape to do the video, it's not as if the picks are being made in a, uh, in a deteriorated state. These picks were kind of conceived yesterday. The only risk we run is that maybe we misclick enter some of them, but we shall see. So for those of you that have been following the way that I construct my MMA wagers, it is the same thing that I do for basketball, baseball, uh, stocks, anything where you have are being challenged to uh, get some kind of an edge against, you know, a lot of experts and a lot of money that's being piled in to the system and fighting that is some sort of VIG. Um, you know, the stock market, the VIG is only transaction costs, but the, the level of expertise is much stronger. The sports betting market, particularly like NBA and NFL, whatever, VIG is not that much like a dollar, five dollar, ten, but again, it's very, very sharp the total amount of people that are putting their money where their mouths, when their mouths are sort of MMA, the level of, you know, of sharpness is, is, is good, but not great. The problem is there's often quite a bit of vig involved with, uh, with the MMA uh, betting streets. So to secure, secure some kind of edge in MMA, it's very similar to some of these other things that you have to, not be able to necessarily out analyze everybody. Oh, well, yes, if you're good enough to do that, that's terrific. What I found is that you can get more of an edge by just kind of gauging the psychology of the public and figuring out what side is just kind of inherently overvalued and which side is inherently undervalued. And you can do that with, you know, a lot of uh, contrarian uh, brain power and a lot of experience applying it to this and other and other uh, other forums. So what we're trying to do is, and we do this kind of as we get towards the end of the week, because at the end of the week, that's when we have kind of a sense of where the public is. And trust me, if all the public and all the money is favoring a particular narrative, so to speak, then that narrative is probably the wrong side. Um, if a, a if the public has literally no if there's no money being placed on one narrative, especially in MMA, it's probably somewhat overvalued. I mean, undervalued. In other words, you probably get good value there um, because what people do is they only assign a very small amount of outcomes to an MMA fight and overweight those outcomes and underweight the outcomes they don't anticipate. So we're going to go through all these fights and see, we'll talk about what the public believes and then we will try to fade that, not because we have a particular opinion on the fight, but because we have a particular opinion on what makes the public the public. Okay. Um, so here are the rules. We are going to bet on this particular card. We're not going to bet... Uh, I'm kind of lost here because I usually bet 180 per fight and don't pass a single fight. Problem is I'm having trouble making a deposit. So I only have room to bet 180 times 10 fights. So I could either do that or I could drop to 90 and then get all 15 fights in. I think I'm going to do that. This way, at least I get an opinion on everything. The other thing I could do is I could bet 100 on 15 fights. So let's do that. But we got to be lucky. So how about 108? So 180, so we'll do lucky 108. That'll work. All right, so 108 on 15 fights. And I know that's not normal, good, you know, normally good money management, just to bet every fight and not overweight any, but that's just the way we're going to do it. 
All right. So, uh, Juliana Miller versus Veronica Macedo. Macedo. So this is basically the idea is that Miller is kind of like a psycho and she's going to just go after it. And the only way that Mikado really has any kind of uh, way to win is kind of by submission. So basically the idea is Juliana Miller is probably going to be very aggressive, go for takedowns, go for the, go for the sub. And Masciato's only real win condition is going to be by sub. So basically the sides that we are not going to be able to play here are Masciato by sub, because I do think that's kind of overvalued. And even Juliana Miller inside the distance, I think that's kind of overvalued as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to play Juliana Miller by decision. So let's put that in here. Um, okay, so fight props. Juliana Miller. Hold on, we go to round props, actually. Juliana Miller by decision plus 180 for one hundred and eight dollars and trust me I, I will put this in afterwards it's not going to let me log in right now because of the um because of the zoom uh it's not gonna like me anyway we're gonna move on jai herbert versus um ludovic klein so one thing that that is kind of um uh, you're gonna hear throughout this card is that is that this fight is being held in london so what that's going to mean is a couple of things. There's a narrative that you don't want to get involved in a decision in London against a British fighter. And also you're going to hear a narrative that um, basically if there is a really good English fighter or a British fighter and, a, and kind of someone coming in, the idea is that they're bringing the other guy in to lose. Now, whether that's the case or not, the fact is, is that that, narrative is going to be overvalued so we're going to probably lean towards a lot of these fighters against the british fighters especially uh to play them by decision um and again that's not exactly doesn't seem logical but that's kind of where the value is going to be so what we're going to do kind of right off the bat so you have klein versus herbert so what you're hearing a little bit is you're not getting a real big lean on either side. I and mean, I guess most people are on climb, but there are enough people that are playing Herbert. So in the absence of anything else, what we're probably going to do is what's the most dangerous. And that's play these anti-British fighters to win by decision. So let's do that. Klein by decision plus 350 for 180. And we'll end up, excuse me, for 108. We'll end up staking all singles for 180 in a minute okay um actually actually after we're done all right uh moving on joanne calderwood now joanne wood versus luana carolina so this is this is to me very easy this is being billed as kind of like the boring women's fight with wood maybe being able to go for takedowns but with carolina being big enough to stuff them and the one thing you're hearing is that it's probably going to end up going to a decision so one thing that that I'm going to do here is do the opposite. And I'm going to go fight ends inside the distance. So um, let's see. Popular. Um, well, we could either go inside the distance. Let's see. Is it fight props or round for fight props? Fight to go the distance. No plus 215. So let's uh, put that in for 180 as well. Excuse me, 108 as well. All right, uh, moving on. Uh, Jake Hadley versus Mal Malcolm Gordon. So this one, I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. So you have Hadley, basically, who has Gordon covered. You have Gordon, who has no chin. And you have, you know, Jake Hadley with every bit of wrestling upside or whatever it is. Um... So we're not going to play the Jake Hadley inside the distance because that is the way overvalued um, spot. The only thing I am hearing is maybe Hadley is, you know, somewhat, maybe the line's a little too wide, maybe. I'm not sure. But we have to play the Malcolm Gordon side of this to be even remotely contrarian. Um, the only question is whether we want to play Malcolm Gordon by decision or inside the distance. Um 
I'd have to say that Gordon by submission at like a million to one is probably really juicy. Um, let's take a look at that uh, round prop. Well, let's look at fight props. Can't even imagine what this would be. This is going to be so long. Winning method. You have Gordon by submission is plus 1,200. But you could also play Malcolm Gordon by decision at plus 550. And that also goes with the anti-British win by decision variation. But I don't know. We're, we're going to go with um, – it's either going to be Malcolm Gordon inside the distance or just Malcolm Gordon – by decision. Let's see Malcolm Gordon by double chance here. Malcolm Gordon, this is either by KO or submission plus 800. That's what we're doing. Okay. That's, 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 that's the idea. Okay. Uh, not 180 for 108. And the good thing about not having that much money in the account is I can't misclick bet too much. All right. Uh, moving on. We have Christian Duncan versus just to, to, to and this, to me, is like one of the easier fights to analyze because everybody's pretty sure what's going to happen here. You have Tudorovic, who you know has a very, very weak chin, and Duncan, you know, fighting in Thailand, has all kinds of like PEDs going through his system. He's going to basically KO him. The only chance Dusto has is to kind of get the wrestling going um, and maybe win a decision that way. So the only so we can't bet Todorovic by decision. We can't bet Duncan inside the distance. The only thing we could do is either Duncan by decision, or maybe Todorovic inside the distance. So let's take a look at some of these. I think Duncan by decision at plus six hundred is a really really strong bet. So let's just do that one. Duncan by decision is for plus six hundred for one oh eight. All right, Lerone Murphy versus Gabriel Santos. So. You have Lerone Murphy, who's coming off a 16-month layoff. And you have Gabriel Santos, who's taking the fight on short notice. So, you know, you are getting a little bit of love on both sides of this. I've heard the case made for Santos. I've heard the case made for Lerone Murphy. Um, and this is one of the fights I'd probably pass if I had to, if I was going to pass the fight, just because... You know, again, I don't see any real big consensus one way or the other. So what we'll just do is bet this fight to go over, you know, bet it, bet it a nice boring fight. I have no real opinion on it. And there's real no um, psychology that can give you any kind of edge if you want to know the truth. Um, so let's just take a look and see. Um, over 2.5 minus 150. I mean, that's that's probably good enough. So let's just go do that. Okay. Um, but again, this is probably a fight I would pass, but we're betting it here. Um, Muhammad Makaya versus Jahil Fieldho. Um, so this is a little bit of a kind of a weird recency bias. A and why is that? Because apparently this fight just happened. Meaning this fight just happened last week with Mario Batista, basically a huge favorite rating to take the guy down and finish him in the first round. And it really didn't disappoint. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to play Makaya first round. We're not going to play Maya by Makaya by submission. What we're going to play is hopefully Fialo or Fifilho just kind of makes this last a little bit. So we're going to bet play this one to be over. Um, now, our, part of me wants to say, let's just take a shot with, with, with Fialo. But I do think that Makayev is going to win. So I'll either go Makayev inside the distance or just kind of bet the over. So let's take a look at this. You have um, round props. Makayev by decision plus 165. Um, yeah, let's just do that. Makayev by decision plus 165. Okay. Moving on, Sam Patterson versus the Israeli. Um, believe it or not, like I don't know, the, the narratives that I'm getting are well, um, Ashmoff, Ashmoff, his only real path to victory is kind of like going for takedowns in a real boring fight, and, and Patterson, although he's not much of a finisher, will probably just kind of fight him off. 
I don't think that people are into the Patterson early um, approach. Um, so we're going to go with that. We're going to take a shot at Patterson in round one, just in case. So Patterson round one plus 240. Okay. Um, moving on to the next one, we have... Now we have Chris Duncan versus Omar Morales. So basically the idea is that Chris Duncan is incredibly hittable. Um, and Duncan, but however, he has more volume. So people are expecting kind of like a striking-based affair with both of them having, you know, kind of like KO upside. So we're going to just basically play this fight to go to decision. But the question is, who are we going to play to go to decision? I mean, if we were really sharp, we would play Morales to decision. Because if anything, Duncan, again, he's from Britain. People are thinking he'll get, it, he'll get the lean. So what does Morales by decision look like? As, a, as opposed, for example, to Duncan by decision. So we have Duncan by decision plus 500. Morales by decision is a little bit weaker. So let's 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 just go with with Duncan by decision. Duncan by decision for 108, just because he's a bigger, better price. All right. Um moving on, we have Jack Shore versus Makwan Ar uh Mirakani. All right, this one we're gonna lose all of our money. Um be, the reason why is that this is the 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 easiest strongest narrative there is out there for this for this fight card and that is that Marikani has one round of cardio and either Marikani um Marikani knocks him out or excuse me submits him in the first round or he runs out of gas and Jack Shore just kind of takes over so so here are the here are the the the, the bets that are unplayable Amirakani round one, believe it or not, unplayable. Uh, Jack Shore round two, round three, or by decision, unplayable. So the only thing you can really do here is either Jack Shore round one, or if you really want to be a psycho, you'll play Marikani in round two. So let's take a look at some of these prices and see what appeals to us here. Jack Shore round one is plus 225. Amira Khani in round two is plus 1,800. Just for fun, we're going to stick it in there. Sorry about that reference, but just for fun, we are going to make that wager. Um, okay, um, moving on. We have Martin Vittori versus Roman Delice. So... You have Delice, who's basically been KO or submission for the last couple of fights as an underdog. Um, and Vittori, who's basically been unable to be knocked out. Um, but the idea is that Vittori, you know, he's more technical. He'll probably wear Delice down or something like that. So the, the, the narratives are that it's either going to be a kind of a boring Vittori win or kind of, a, once again, kind of a lucky the leads a first or second round win. So those are the, the, the values that are probably not going to be playable. So you could either play something like the leads a late or by decision or Vittori Vittori on the early side. So we're going to play Vittori inside the distance. So it's either going to be just straight Vittori inside the distance, or if we want to get greedy, we'll go by a particular round. And let's just kind of take a look and see what we got. I think we're just going to go with him inside the distance. So let's take a look. Vittori, second chance. Mm, well, let's look at the rounds first. Round props. Vittori round two plus 1,000. Vittori round three plus 1,600. Okay, interesting. Or Vittori inside the distance would be plus 350. Let's just do that. Vittori inside the distance plus 350. That's, that's very, very strong. Okay, uh, it's the three more fights, I believe. And we have, oh, actually four more. You have, no, why do we have three more? Anyway, we have, we did Joanna Wood versus Carolina. Oh, we have 
Jennifer Maya versus Casey O'Neill. So you have Casey O'Neill coming off the two year layoff, but she's very, very active. Um, and I'm unfortunately I'm hearing, I'm hearing some love for both sides of this. I mean, if anything, I think Maya is getting a little bit too much action here, like as being like the veteran that's, that's fought the better competition. I actually think that the O'Neill, like kind of early, or the O'Neill by this by by finish side is kind of being over under uh, under bet here. So that's what we're gonna try. We're gonna try O'Neill inside the distance, and let's just see what that looks like. O'Neill, so inside the distance means either by KO or by submission. Um, plus three thirty. That looks good enough to me. So O'Neill inside the distance for 108. I'm curious to see which fight I did twice here. Well, we'll find it in a minute, but let's see. Gunnar Nelson. Oh, we have more fights. Where are all these fights coming from? Gunnar Nelson versus Brian Barbarena. All right. So Gunnar Nelson is apparently going to take him down and win kind of a boring decision or submit him. Uh, or if Brian Barberina is going to win, it's going to be kind of like a lot of strikes and something like that. Um, so I feel as though Barberina, even by anything, is I, I don't know if I can bet that. I think we're just going to try Gunnar Nelson by submission. You know, just take the free dollar ten, maybe. Let's take a look and see what these odds are. I was kind of hoping that the 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 recency bias of getting kind of a boring decision in his last fight probably keep these odds down. Yeah, you know what? Let's just try it. Let's let's try Gunnar Nelson round two, as we always try in these situations, or one hundred and eight. Gunnar Nelson in round two. Okay, Justin Gaethje against Raphael Fiziev. So you have Gaethje kind of all action. If he gets a hold of you, he can knock you out. Wild man. Um, then you have Fiziev, very, very strong uh, counter puncher. Um, we're expecting to see fireworks in this fight. Um, basically, though, the idea is that Fiziev, he's a little more likely to win by decision than Gaethje. Um so here, here's the overvalued pieces. The overvalued pieces are Gaethje by any kind of KO. I think Fiziev is probably kind of fair across the board. I don't think that people think Fiziev can knock him out in the first round, though. So let's take a shot with that one. Fiziev round one. Not Gaethje. Fiziev round one for plus 300 against Gaethje. And we could do round, round, round two is probably wiser. So let's just stick with round one. We don't want to play wise bets here. And when we go through these, we're going to see which ones we're, because we have two more fights. I know they're only 15 fights, so we'll see what we did twice. Um, oh, I guess that's it actually. So you have um, one more fight. You have um, Leon Edwards versus Kamaru Usman. Um, unfortunately, uh, I'm pretty sure what I'm doing here from a betting perspective. Kamaru Usman, very easy, right? He was winning the fight very, very easily until he got the lucky KO by Leon Edwards. Um, so obviously, you know, Usman is just going to do the same thing he did before. Just avoid the big KO and be, be easily the winner. So we're going to take Edwards. Uh, Edwards was going to be plus 200. Plus 200. Um, he can win by decision. He can win by KO, whatever it is. So KO, uh, whatever. Edwards plus the one, 200 for 108. So let's see what fight we doubled up on. And let's just kind of review what we have. Juliana Millard by decision plus 180. Klein by decision plus 350. Joanna Wood, inside the distance, plus 215. Malcolm Gordon, money line, plus 330. Let's go. Ooh, Malcolm Gordon by KO or submission. Yeah, we're going to do that one instead of the just Malcolm Gordon plus 330 because he's not winning a decision. Um, 
Chris Duncan by decision plus 600. Over two and a half in the Murphy fight minus 150. You have Makaev by decision plus 165. Patterson round one plus 240. Duncan, the other Duncan by decision. So both of them by decision. This one plus 500. Amir Khani round two plus 8 billion. Vittori to win by K inside the distance plus 350. Casey O'Neill inside the distance plus 330. Gunnar Nelson specifically round two plus 400. Raphael Fiziev round one plus 300. And Leon Edwards plus 200. 15 times 108 is going to be, what is that? Uh, 1080 plus 540, 1620. That's what we're going to put in as soon as we log off. Good luck in tomorrow's fights.